All right, what is up my homies and welcome to Day 2 Grey Gaming. Today on another episode of Settlement Builds for Noobs, we are going to be taking a look at Oberlin Station. This is a location that tends to be ignored by a lot of players because it's an extremely small build area. The terrain is quite steep and uneven and there's just not a lot of room to build with. There's not a lot that you can really do at this location. But because we're located right on the railroad tracks, I decided I wanted to try a slightly different variation of the scrapper build that I showed off at Outpost Zamonja. This would be a location where there would be tons of rail cars available, and we do see a fair number of rail cars both to the north and south along the railroad tracks. So that's what we're going to be taking a look at today. Without any further ado, let's go ahead and check out Oberlin Station. So here we are at Oberlin Station as I've been able to build it up. So I decided to make this a little bit more clean, a little more organized than you saw at Outpost the Monja. So I stuck with one color of rail car. Most of the rail cars in this area tend to be blue anyway, so it's not that far out of place. We are also close to a few different villages, a few different places where you could get a number of different scrapped materials. We are also very close to Vault 81, so some vault items wouldn't be that out of place if we were going to try and acquire something via trade deals. So this is what we currently have. So let's go ahead and take a look at this from the ground level. So there are two main entrances into this facility and it is via two rail cars that are accessible via these sliding rail cart doors. So there's one on either side of the railroad tracks. So as we step in, we have our main storefront area. So these three rail cars on this wall are all for the three stores that we have. This is not a full size settlement like you normally see where we have 20 people. This is just a small settlement with eight settlers in it, and it has a capacity of about that. We don't really have enough room to add any additional people. So this is not exactly going to be a metropolis but this is at least a small settlement that you are able to get some semblance of an actual village in. So of the three stores that we are able to man, the first of these is a clinic. So we just have some Vault-Tec style posters around. And of course we have our doctor who's just running a tier three clinic. And other than that, there's not a whole lot going on in here. We just have a couch for people to wait at, and we do have a bed in case anyone is wounded and needs a place to stay under the supervision of a doctor. So stepping down here, we have our main bar and restaurant area. So we do have a Vault 88 soda machine, and we do have our bar, but other than that, this is really sparsely populated compared to what we normally set up in our bars, mostly because of how cramped the rail cars are. So because I was already making the wall for this settlement out of rail cars, I decided to try and populate them as much as possible with the various different types of amenities we would need. So all of our shops are built into the wall as well as all of our residences as well. So the bar, is just a soda mixer, a table, and an eatatronic if we decide we want to eat what's going on here. There's just some signage that could have been scrapped from any of the local areas. And then in here we have our general trader. So there's not a whole lot going on here. So we just have the general trader who's apparently trying to go take a break somewhere and can't get there. The pathing in this location is a little on the problematic side, if I'm being completely honest. So that is it for our three shops. And of course, down here, we have the north entrance to the settlement for anyone who's coming from the Grey Garden direction. And of course, all of our doorways and entrances are pretty heavily defended. We do have turrets in all directions, although the vast majority of attacks tend to come from down here by the river or uphill by the other gate. So we don't have to worry too much about attackers spawning inside our settlement, which is really helpful because this is a fairly haphazard settlement. All right. 
So here along the railroad tracks, we do have a, a Brahmin pen. So we just have a feeder and a small pen. It's not really designed for permanently housing our Brahmin. This is more to keep your pack Brahmin um, if we had any traveling caravans who wanted to spend the night. I didn't set up a caravan trade post just because we were starting to get pretty cramped and we were running out of level area that we could actually place one. All right. So moving over here, we have a pair of outhouses and they're pretty much an outhouse. They're just a toilet. So I did kind of build them on this concrete platform for one because I wanted something level to set them on. But you can also kind of explain away that these are composting toilets, which would help for the garden area, which actually takes up a fair amount of the eastern portion of our settlement, which we will get to. We do have this platform where we display our three suits of T-51 power armor here. So for a settlement of eight people, that's not a terrible power armor ratio. And of course, the pre-standing, um, I don't even know what you would call this, a way station is serving as a elevated turret platform. So if anyone actually does manage to get inside the settlement, they really don't have any place to hide. They have turrets to deal with in all directions. The way station itself is serving as the hotel. So we have three of these smaller beds, just a couple chairs for people to sit in. Nothing super fancy, especially even by my hotel standards, where it's usually trying to make use of unscrappable structures and actually kind of give some place for non-residents to stay if they were just passing through. This is still pretty run down and not that great as far as what's offered, but it is making use of that space that we can't really um, do anything else with. So let's go ahead and pass around here. So we do have two guns with our elevated artillery battery. I don't know why she's just standing on the steps. And so we do have two elevated shooting positions, two people that can face different directions, and they get a pretty decent view of the surrounding area. They can see as far as Grey Garden and the Corvega plant to this direction. They can see all the way to the Boston ruins in this direction. And they can see, uh, to a decent degree, there is kind of a forest facing south, so they don't get that much um, visibility added by their height there. And then there is also the um, western water plant to the west. So quite a bit of additional elevation that allows them to see quite a bit of what's going on here. So as we pass around the rest of the settlement, the rest of these rail cars are all personal residences. So the residences are all pretty much the same accommodations. They're just variations of the same ones. So everyone gets one of these Vault-Tec style beds. So that's one of the things that they could have easily traded from a Vault 81 in exchange for other things. But just about all the rest of the furniture is something that could have been scavenged from the small village that's outside of Vault 81 or across the river where there is a, another small village on the other side of the dam. So just about every house has a chair to sit in. They have some sort of container to store their personal effects in so we don't have to throw garbage everywhere. They can have some place to neatly stow their stuff. And they all have a nice, comfortable vault tech style bed. So... All of these rail cars are going to be slightly different, but they're all going to follow that same formula. Another thing you might notice is that all of these rail cars are built on concrete platforms, and that's due to the fact that rail cars do not like being placed on slopes, and just about everywhere here is a slope. But it also makes sense that we're pouring concrete, we're giving these rail cars a solid foundation to sit on because they're not going to stay in one piece if they're placed on a hill. They're going to shear and tear and fall apart. And so this is one way of reusing these rail cars in a way that they will last longer. It's also making the best use of the rail cars as a additional piece to the defenses where we're not having to do an entire wall of just concrete. We just have to pour a concrete foundation. 
And also we don't have to worry about finding a way to stack these rail cars two cars high. There is a bit of a clipping issue with this concrete base for our elevated turret platforms. And that is my fault. I didn't realize this, but these concrete bases are actually deeper than the standard concrete bases. These are the ones from the barn build set. So they're just using concrete. They don't use the steel plates over the top like the concrete build set does. So I just attached a couple concrete walls in order to get the proper height and then stack these too high. But these are deeper than your concrete walls. They're actually the same depth as the walls for the warehouse and the barn. So these are actually slightly clipping through each other. So you kind of have these artifacts going on, which I can easily fix this. It just requires me to pull the guns off, reassign the settlers and use a warehouse wall to set the second layer instead of what I currently have. So it's just something I've been too lazy to actually take care of. But that is something where as long as you use the warehouse wall to set your second layer of concrete floors to serve as the foundation for this, you won't have that particular artifact going on. So here we have another one of these houses. So a steamer trunk that was scavenged from somewhere and a pretty shredded chair. The same difference, we have a small foot locker, a metal box, a ratty old couch from somewhere. So all of these, like I said, are slightly different layout. You can put whatever you want in there, but they all pretty much have the same basic supplies that are provided to the settlers. So same here, we've got a file cabinet for storing your stuff. You've got a ratty old chair and a nice comfy vault tech bed. So as we move around the site here, we do have the garden area. So we have pretty much the same diversity of diet as just about any of our other settlements. When you first arrive here, all they grow is potatoes. So you can get rid of a few of the potatoes and start adding in things like these melon plants, some carrots, some mute fruit, some razor grain, and really improve what your settlers have available to them. So that you're not just eating one crop, you don't have to deal with getting nutritional deficiencies nearly as much, and you don't have to worry about something wiping out all of your plants at once. Odds are something that's going to wipe out one plant isn't going to affect your entire uh, crop all at once. So here we kind of have this larger boardwalk area. So I just threw in some exercise equipment just to increase the settler happiness here. We don't have nearly as much of the happiness generating stuff as most of the other things I like to put in my settlements. So improving the things that we do have is kind of a thing that I've thought about, but we really just don't have the room. Our wall is really hugging the outermost boundaries and we're still pretty cramped in here. So same thing, we've got some benches, we've got this workshop bench cabinet thing and bed. I'll stop going into the rail cars at this point. I think you pretty much have the gist of it. And then the only other thing we really have is just this small table here and some chairs and our main engineering shack. So in here, we have the workshop, which is kind of in a terrible place for the workshop, if we're being honest. But we also have one powered water pump, so we produce enough water for 10 people. And we have one fusion generator. So we do have a fairly decent number of powered turrets, but quite honestly, we're not really using that much power at this site other than those turrets. It's a fairly power um efficient build i'll say so as we step over here
we have access to our rail car rooftop. So just like Outpost Samanja, we need to have some way of getting on top of the wall so that we can repair our turrets after an attack or if we just want to have a lookout or if we just want to be able to take a stroll along the top of the rail cars. And so that's really what this provides us is the way to get all the way around the settlement. And we pretty much have that here. So we have the ability to completely circumnavigate the settlement, even though we have a lot of different elevation changes. When it comes to our rail cars, we are able to go all the way around as we need. And so we were able to do a full circle of the entire settlement. So all in all, this is not my favorite build that I've ever done at this location. Like I normally like to say, this isn't my normal aesthetic. You guys know me. I like my concrete towers. I like my heavy fortifications. And this is a bit scrappy. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense when you consider the fact that this is supposed to be over 200 years after the end of the Great War. There should have been a lot more development and a lot more rebuilding going on than what you're seeing here. However, with that said, some people prefer this aesthetic. Some people like the gritty, scrappy aesthetic. And so that's one thing that I'm trying to explore a little bit more. And so that's what we're seeing here is reusing the materials that are already readily available that would require minimal tools in order to get the job done. And quite honestly, it's not the worst that I've ever built at this location. In fact, it's probably my second best. But I'd love to hear what you all have to say about this. Is this a build that you would like to replicate yourself? Is this something that has a lot of room for improvement? Go ahead and leave your comments below. As always, thank you for watching to the very end. If you have made it this far, a like is always appreciated. Until next time, I'm Gray. You've been watching Great Gaming, and we hope to see you all here later. Have a good one.